Imagine sharing your life with a partner for over 10 years and living in the midst of a relationship that you thought was going fine. Yes, there are ups and downs in every relationship, but when you stick with your partner and you work through things that could have torn you apart and together you come out whole and healthy on the other side, or so you think you have. You feel good because you feel like you guys have made it. You think to yourself, this relationship could probably stand a test of time. Now imagine a person that lays next to you each night that you trust with your life literally would try and murder you. In 2012, when Leroy Fowler met Judy Church, he had no idea that she would become his worst nightmare. A Massachusetts woman is accused of killing her boyfriend by poisoning him with antifreeze. This story comes out of Salisbury, Massachusetts. Massachusetts is located in the northeastern part of the United States. A few things that you may not know about Massachusetts. The word Massachusetts comes from the Native American language and it means place with hills. Massachusetts is famous for the Salem witch trials. In the year 1620, a ship called the Mayflower that was full of pilgrims landed in a state that is now called Massachusetts. Leroy Francis Fowler Jr. was born November 11, 1967 to Mr. Leroy Fowler Sr. and his wife Janet, whose maiden name was Haywood. Leroy was raised and educated in Newburyport and was a graduate of Whitaker Tech. After he graduated, he began his career. He was known as a jack of all trades. He owned and operated the Fowler Home Improvement and Roofing Company for many years before he decided to semi-retire in 2015. In his spare time, it's said that he loved riding his motorcycle. He liked to play Keno, and he loved to go to yard sales. Fowler was also a pet lover. He loved his three dogs. Their names were Springer, Keno, and Salt. At one point, Fowler was married, and during that marriage, he and his wife had two sons. He had siblings, brothers, and sisters, and they were a close-knit family. He also had an eight-year-old grandson that he loved and adored. He spent a lot of time with his grandson and he enjoyed that time. Judy Church was a 64 year old retired school teacher from the Massachusetts area. Church spent 31 years as a fourth grade teacher in Middleton and she also lived in Salisbury for about 29 years. Church was married and currently going through a divorce in which she was contesting. Church met Fowler back in 2012. He and she had an on-again, off-again relationship. Fowler was a single man who enjoyed his freedom. Unlike Church, he wasn't interested in being in a monogamous relationship, and he enjoyed doing what he wanted to do. On the night of November 11, 2022, 64-year-old Judy Church called 911 to the Salisbury Police Department. She informed the dispatcher that 55-year-old Leroy Fowler was having some type of medical emergency. She stated that he must have ingested something and she didn't know what was going on. When paramedics arrived, they found Fowler inside of a bedroom. He was bleeding from his nose and he wasn't able to stand. He was pulling the bedroom apart and he was clearly in medical distress. Fowler was immediately rushed to the hospital. Shortly after he arrived, he went into convulsions. Doctors were not able to help him, so they transferred him to another hospital. Once he reached the second hospital, the second hospital was not able to treat his worsening condition. Over the next 48 hours, Fowler would be transferred to a total of three hospitals in the northeastern region of the state. While Fowler was at the Boston Bethel Israel Hospital, Church approached the doctors and asked to be his proxy. She claimed that she was his health care proxy, but doctors didn't believe her and they refused to allow her to take control of his medical care. Doctors informed the Fowler family that Mr. Fowler's kidneys were damaged, that they were failing fast, and they believed that he had ingested some type of poison. On November 13, 2022, Fowler passed away in the Bethel Israel Hospital in Boston. Due to the case of Mr. Fowler's demise, 
Hospital authorities notified the police department that there was some type of foul play. Authorities immediately started to gather the family members and also friends and whoever they could think of that may have some information to help them figure out what was going on. They called Miss Church down to the police station and they had an interview with her. Church told authorities that on November 11th, the day of the incident, which also was Mr. Fowler's birthday, that he was just working around her house, doing some chores, helping her out, and he appeared to be tired and winded. She claimed that nothing else was unusual, but as the day progressed, he seemed to not be feeling well. And as his symptoms continued, she realized that something was wrong with him, and she called 911. When authorities spoke to Michael Hawkins, who was the son of Church's longtime girlfriend who had passed away, he told authorities that Fowler himself had accused Church of poisoning him. He said that every time he came around her and he left her home, he felt better. But when he was around her, he was sick. Hawkins' father's stepson went on to say that Fowler didn't drink alcohol, but he did enjoy a red Powerade. He also enjoyed Pepsi and he liked the coffee shake. And the coffee shake is something that Church would make for him often that he really enjoyed. But he told his family, you know, jokingly, but also serious that he was feeling sick when he was around her. And it seemed that whenever he left her home, he'd feel better. Fowler had even mentioned to a couple of family members that he believed that he was being poisoned. And they laughed it off and they thought that he was just joking because he was a prankster. When Fowler's biological son was interviewed, he told detectives that Church had taken out a life insurance policy on his father about a year ago, but he had no record of it, but he knew for a fact she had taken out that policy. He also told investigators that Church was upset with Fowler, that uh, Mr. Fowler had another girlfriend that she knew about, and he refused to commit to either one of them. And he saw both of them, and he went back and forth between the two, and that Church was very angry about it. Fowler was seeing this other woman, and Church couldn't deal with it. She was already going through a divorce from her current husband, and she just wanted a commitment that he wasn't willing to get. He wasn't ready to settle down with one woman. He enjoyed his single life, and she couldn't handle that. The autopsy report found deadly levels of the industrial toxic chemical in Mr. Fowler's body. The state's attorney said that when Miss Church called 911 and said that he had ingested something, she knew exactly what that something was, and it was ethylene glycol that she had given him over time, poisoning him slowly. Ethylene glycol is an industrial compound commonly found in antifreeze, and it's a de-icing fluid also, and they also use it as a hydraulic brake fluid. This is a very dangerous substance. It has a sweet taste, so most people don't realize that they have ingested it because of the sweet, syrupy taste. Authorities allege that Miss Church gave Mr. Fowler the lethal dose of ethylene glycol in his coffee on the evening of November 11th, 2022. Authorities also turned over evidence to the state's attorney that was taken from Miss Church's phone. They said that they found 13 videos of Mr. Fowler thrashing about and in medical distress while she recorded him. Authorities stated that Miss Church was documenting these incidents that Mr. Fowler was having. Church told investigators that when Fowler would make the statements about her poisoning him to his families, that it was all a joke. She said that the two of them used to watch crime documentaries together and they joked about it. And she said that he was only joking with his family when he said that, that he didn't really mean that because she wasn't trying to poison him. Authorities also said besides the documentation that she recorded on her phone with Mr. Fowler thrashing about, she also had a recent screenshot of a purchase from AutoZone and photos from her phone. One of the photos on her phone was a bottle of de-icing fluid that she had captured. And the de-icing fluid was one of the items that was found in the kitchen and near Mr. Fowler's bed. One of the detectives asked Miss Church how she knew so much about the disease that Mr. Fowler was, you know, um, dealing with. And she said that she had Googled it and that she used her browser internet to find information on his symptoms. She also knew a lot about medical language and his condition. Based on the information that the hospital gave them, and also talking to the family members and there being suspicion against Miss Church, authorities decided to get a warrant and search her home. When authorities entered the residence and began their search, they found a bottle of orange liquid on the kitchen counter. And they also found a bottle of fruit punch power aid, 
with orange residue in the trash. When authorities searched Church's phone, they found a picture of a clear glass filled with orange liquid that was placed in a cup holder that was next to the wall over the bed where flowers slept. This was a suspicious substance that police were curious to see how she would explain exactly what the liquid was. When the detectives concluded their investigation and had gathered enough information, they turned the case over to the state's attorney. On December 22, 2022, 64-year-old Judy Church was arrested and charged with murder. The charges were based on findings and different evidence that the police were able to obtain. It also included the medical examiner's report that stated that ethylene glycol poisoning was the cause of death. Part of the damaging evidence that was presented to the state's attorney by the police was that they claimed that they discovered 13 videos on Church's phone, all of which showed that between the hours of 7.29 and 7.59 a.m. that Mr. Fowler was in agony and that he was in the bedroom. And according to police, those videos depicted him just in withering in agony. Police stated that no medical attention was given and it wasn't until 7.59 when Church asked Fowler if he wanted an ambulance, and he responded, yes, he did. During the arraignment, Essex County District Attorney Paul Tucker announced that Church's attorney, Timothy Connors, because she had no passport, her attorney believes that she would not be a flight risk, had requested her release. He said that he wanted to put her on GPS monitoring, and he told the Superior Court the judge, Thomas Deschler, the church has spent 31 years as a fourth grade teacher in Middleton and that she lived in Salisbury for 29 years. She had no passport and that he didn't believe that she would try and run. Although church's attorney believed that, prosecutors stated that she was a flight risk. Prosecutors stated because of the serious nature of this crime, they didn't believe that it was reasonable for her to be given bail. They felt that the flight risk was too great. The judge agreed and church will be held without bond. She is due back in court on May the 11th to start a pretrial hearing. One of the things about this case that is most disturbing is the fact that not only was he poisoned slowly, but that he was allegedly giving the fatal dose on his 55th birthday.